Imagine you're sitting in a silent theater, watching a film with nothing but title cards to explain the story. Hard to believe, right? Yet, this is how cinema began. Completely silent, with live music and sound effects performed in the theater to bring the story to life. But it didn't take long for filmmakers to realize that sound could turn moving pictures into something much more immersive. Soon enough, movies found their voice and everything changed. In this video, we're gonna go over the history of sound in movies and dive into the moments that made movie sound a game changer. But before we do, y'all make sure to subscribe. From the fuzzy crackle of the first low quality sounds to today's jaw dropping immersive 3D audio that surrounds you, the evolution of sound and cinema transformed films forever. Back in the day, which was probably a Tuesday, in the early days of cinema, movies were completely silent. Title cards were used to convey dialogue and narrative, while live musicians or orchestras often performed in theaters to provide emotional depth to the visuals. In some cases, folly artists would even create live sound effects during screenings to add excitement to the experience. But this was far from perfect. Filmmakers and innovators alike were driven by the need to synchronize sound with movie images, a feat that proved technically challenging. Early experiments with sound began in the late 19th century. Innovators like Thomas Edison tried syncing phonographs with films, but the results were crude. The limitations were not just technological, but also logistical. It wasn't until the 1920s that the synchronization of sound and image truly began to take hold. Enter the Vitaphone system, a breakthrough developed by Western Electric and Bell Telephone Laboratories. This system used a separate phonograph record to play sound in sync with the film, and it became one of the most advanced early systems for sound. The game changer for synchronized sound was something called the Jazz Singer. In 1927, cinema took its most significant leap forward with the release of the Jazz Singer, often hailed as the first, quote, talkie. It wasn't actually the first film to feature synchronized sound, but was the first to include spoken dialogue and its massive success forever changed the film industry. For the first time, audiences were able to hear the emotional nuances of an actor's voice, which added a new layer of storytelling. The Vitaphone system used in the jazz singer played a critical role in this milestone, allowing for synchronized dialogue, music, and sound effects. But it wasn't just the jazz singer that was revolutionary. Films like Don Juan, released in 1926, were among the first to feature synchronized soundtracks of music and effects using the Vitaphone system. These early talkies were relatively simple with basic soundtracks, but they laid the groundwork for a more sophisticated sound design that would follow. Following the success of the jazz singer, filmmakers and engineers worked to perfect synchronized sound. Warner Brothers released The Jazz Singer, the first feature length film with synchronized dialogue. Wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. The release marked the beginning of the end of the silent film era. The term silent film is somewhat misleading, as silent films were often accompanied by live music played by anyone from a single musician to a full orchestra. In fact, from the very beginning of cinema, people such as Thomas Edison and William Dixon had been trying to combine film and audio. But it was only in the mid-1920s that Hollywood began seriously considering utilizing synchronized sound in feature films. It was then that Warner Brothers used a sound on disc system called Vitaphone to incorporate a completely synchronized score. To this public demonstration of the Vitaphone, synchronizing the reproduction of sound with the reproduction of action. Performed by the New York Philharmonic Orchestra into the 1926 film Don Juan. After that movie's success, 
Warner Brothers immediately began production of The Jazz Singer, using the same system to include dialogue in addition to the musical score. The inclusion of synchronized sound altered the landscape of filmmaking. Cameras, being noisy, were sequestered into soundproof booths, robbing them of free movement. Directors could no longer vocally direct actors while filming, since the microphones would pick up the sound. Sound in movies led to major increases in profit for studios. By 1933, most technical problems had been resolved, leading to a new era of film. Nothing but blue skies from now on. You like that, Mama? The Vitaphone, which relied on a separate disc for sound, was soon overtaken by sound on film technologies like the movie tone and the phonofilm. These systems recorded sound directly onto the film strip, ensuring perfect synchronization. Movie tone became the industry standard, used in newsreels and later adapted for feature films. As more films embraced synchronized sound, the influence of radio became evident. Dialogue-heavy films began to dominate the industry, often resembling radio plays with the emphasis on clear, audible speech. However, this period marked the foundation for sound design's potential as a cinematic tool. The 1950s ushered in a brand new era of sound technology, stereo sound. No longer confined to a single channel, stereo split audio into multiple channels, adding depth and realism to the sound experience. It was in the 1970s that surround sound began to truly emerge with multi-channel systems that placed speakers around the audience for a more immersive experience. A landmark example is the movie Star Wars, which was released in 1977. It used Dolby Stereo, a four-channel surround sound system that allowed sound to move across the theater. Ben Burp, the sound designer behind Star Wars, pioneered dynamic sound effects that brought the story's world to life, creating iconic sounds like the lightsabers, droids, and spacecrafts that audiences could feel moving through the theater space around them. This was revolutionary for the time and proved how integral sound could be for storytelling and movies. In the 1980s, George Lucas again pushed the boundaries of sound with the creation of THX, named after Lucas's first film, THX 1138. The THX certification program was designed to establish strict sound and image quality standards in theaters. Unlike a sound format, THX was made to ensure that every element of a theater's audio system, from the speakers to the acoustics, met high quality benchmarks. The goal was to make sure that audiences hear exactly what the filmmakers intended, no matter which theater they were in. Lucas first used THX in 1983's Return of the Jedi, setting a new standard for sound fidelity. Today, while largely less relevant, THX certification ensures that sound in both theaters and home systems is clear, crisp, and immersive. By the 1990s, digital technology was revolutionizing how sound was created and edited for films. Digital sound design allowed for greater flexibility and precision, allowing filmmakers to craft increasingly complex soundscapes. One standout example is The Matrix, released in 1999. It's a film that leveraged digital sound technology to immerse viewers in its futuristic world. Its innovative use of digital sampling and audio editing was essential in creating the film's unique aesthetic. This allowed the sound design to mirror the film's fast-paced, stylized visuals and helped elevate it to iconic status in pop culture which leads us to today. Today we have innovations like Dolby Atmos, which have taken cinematic sound to new heights. Unlike traditional surround sound, which assigns audio to specific channels, Dolby Atmos is object-based audio, 
This means that individual sounds such as footsteps, rain, or a helicopter can be placed in precise locations within a 3D space above, below, and around the audience. Films like Gravity, released in 2013, have used Atmos to a stunning effect, immersing viewers in the vast, perilous emptiness of space. I know personally when I first watched the movie, the first opening scene where the rocket is going through space, I actually thought I heard a giant helicopter or jumbo jet flying over my house and I went outside to look and realized there was nothing going by outside so I went back inside and realized that the sound was actually the movie. It was such a low pitch frequency and the way that it panned, it tricked me into thinking it was real. Which is why filmmakers today are also exploring the psychological impacts of sound. Horror films in particular manipulate sound to unnerve audiences. A Quiet Place, which was released in 2018, uses silence as a weapon, making the absence of sound as nerve wracking as any jump scare. This is a reminder that sound is not just about loud explosions or orchestral swells, but it's also about crafting an emotional experience. Sound's dynamic range is used to build tension, manipulate mood, and even trick audiences. Quiet moments lull viewers into a false sense of calm, only to startle them with a the sudden jarring noise. a common technique which is used in thrillers and horror films. And traditionally, like in a, in a movie like that, you could then have the person trapped in the basement is hearing someone walking over the top of the floor. So they're hearing the floorboards creak and they're starting to panic. Because we can drive individual speakers. Now I can hear the door knocking just here in the corner of the theater. So from the crude early attempts at syncing sound, to the digital and 3D audio technologies of today, sound has been integral in shaping how we experience cinema. Each advancement in sound has added a new layer to storytelling, turning movies into fully immersive sensory experiences. Sound is no longer an accompaniment, it's a star in its own right, guiding audiences through the story with every note, effect, and whispered word. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Make sure to subscribe and I'll talk to y'all again very soon. And if you're creating a studio room and want to be able to immerse people into your soundscapes, if you're planning on recording, mixing, or mastering, or doing something where you plan on being immersed in audio yourself, say you have a two-channel listening room or a home theater room, and you want to get the best possible experience or use out of that space, I would love to encourage you to fill out our room analysis form. It's completely free and we can look over it and give you recommendations on how you could improve your space. And if you would like to personally have a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we could talk to you about your space and design the best treatment plan for you, feel free to do that as well. The links are in the description below.